Venera D, the ExoMars mission, the International Space Station, and the Erosita X-ray Observatory. These planetary science missions have all been affected by the Russia-Ukraine war. I'll explain how that conflict in Europe is rippling out into space and what the long-term implications might be. To start, we have to unpack the history between the US and Russia space relationship. Many of those collaborations date back to the early 1990s, following the dissolution of the Soviet Union. It wasn't always a given that the two countries would become close partners and that the International Space Station would be their biggest joint venture in space. In the early 1990s, an influential Russian physicist wrote that in the post-Cold War world, space policy is foreign policy. Human spaceflight became emblematic of diplomacy and to some extent, the westernization of Russia. Now let's fast forward to today, following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. On February 26, just two days after the invasion, those long-standing relationships began to fray. Dmitry Rogozin, who was the head of Roscosmos, the Russian space agency, announced that it was giving NASA the boot from Venera D, its planned mission to Venus. The mission has been years in the making, with NASA playing an advisory role. To understand more about that legacy and what the current tensions might mean, I called our space reporter, Island Woodward. Venera D is sort of going to be was planned to be a large-scale mission, almost like sending a rover to Mars. But since it's expected to launch in 2029, and a lot can happen between now and then, the focus has been on other aspects of space exploration. Venera D aside, there is sort of a more definitive impact that occurred to a mission to Mars just a few days after. For more than a decade, scientists in European countries and in Russia had been working on a new Mars rover called the Rosalind Franklin rover. The ExoMars mission, which includes that new rover, had already been saddled with delays due to funding and the pandemic. ExoMars was supposed to launch in September, but the European Space Agency has suspended cooperation with Russia and canceled the upcoming launch, which was going to use Russian rockets. The, the delay is significant because when you're trying to send things to Mars from Earth, the way that the two planets orbits are situated is that they're only close enough to launch a spacecraft every two years. A delay means a two year delay. After Twitter threats from Russia, the journal confirmed that Roscosmos was questioning Russia's continued involvement in operating the International Space Station. Given that the ISS is like the crown jewel of US-Russia space cooperation, that seemed like a big deal. Because the ISS orbit is low, it runs the risk of falling prey to Earth's gravitational pull. So every so often, the ISS needs a little upward nudge to keep the lab orbiting safely. Russian thrusters get that job done. Island told me that commercial rockets made by companies like SpaceX and Northrop Grumman could step in and help with tasks like delivering cargo, shuttling crew, and those orbital corrections. In the meantime, tensions have fluctuated, especially on Twitter, thanks in large part to a video depicting Russian cosmonauts abandoning an American astronaut at the ISS. A Russian state news agency shared the video on social media with a caption warning what Russia withdrawing from the ISS would mean for the project. The Russian state agency said Roscosmos made the spoof video, but that claim couldn't be confirmed. All that drama aside, at least for now, operations on the ISS seem to be going as planned. Nothing has changed in the last three weeks. Uh, the control centers operate successfully, flawlessly, seamlessly. While operations on the ISS continue largely unchanged, according to NASA, another critical instrument in space has been turned off, at least for now. It's known as the Erosita X-ray Telescope, and it's part of an orbiting observatory run jointly by the Russian and German space agencies. It's been mapping the, the universe for like the last two and a half years, so it's remarkable that they elected to stop collecting data. This conflict has certainly prompted several international scientific collaborations to reevaluate how Russia and Russian scientists and Russian funding fits into their model. That's already rippling out to other big scientific projects. But space is unique because it's a big part of the country's identity. Think back to the Soviet space dogs, Sputnik and Yuri Gagarin, the first person in space. We sometimes forget that the Cold War between the US and the Soviet Union played out largely in space and the moon was a final battleground. Now we could be seeing the beginnings of a sequel to those times. If you like this video, hit subscribe so you don't miss any of our updates. And if you're interested in more Ukraine-related news, check out Shelby Holiday's channel. Hasta luego, and thanks for watching.